All right. Hello, everyone, and thanks to the OpenMDO team for this slot. Um, in this talk, it's, it's really more of a two small talks back to back. Um, in the first half, I'm going to be talking about the um, some of the error propulsive design work that we did um, throughout my thesis and the current ongoing work on it, and also um, some of the more recent nonlinear solver development in OpenMDAO. So first up is the error propulsive design optimization. Um, so about halfway throughout my PhD, um, I picked up um, Justin's project on studying the boundary layer ingestion fan of the Stark ABL concept. Um, this, Justin's work was really a, like a groundbreaking effort on these like error propulsive methods. But at the time when I picked up the project, we still couldn't get re results reliably out of these error propulsive methods. So my goal um, throughout my PhD was to bring the capability to a point where we can expect to see a result instead of you know, tinkering with the result and then iterating many times to get something valid. So to make these progresses, um, we developed a benchmark um, potted fan design that simplifies that design problem quite a bit, which is based on the Stark ABL's um, BLI propulsion system. Now, with this design, uh, we came up with um, two coupled error propulsive models. Um, the one on the left is using an actuator zone to add uh, momentum source terms to the flow, which is, um, and then the one on the right, uh, the one on the right is the approach that uses powered boundary conditions to model the propulsor on the flow. Now, the actuator zone type methods come in really useful when you're doing some like boundary layer ingestion, but then a lot of, uh, a lot of the CFD solvers might not have access to something like that, right? So we still wanted to do the boundary condition version as well, which is more common. And um, towards the end of the first part, um, you'll also see why the boundary condition is also still valuable, even if you're doing some of the state-of-the-art stuff. Um, so it's pretty safe to say now everybody has heard of OpenMDA in this room. Um, so I use OpenMDA for pretty much all of my proposed design optimization work. Um, mo Pretty much, and again, all of the error purpose design optimization work was done, with, done through EMFIS that we're going to talk um, tomorrow during the EMFIS workshop, and we'll give a bit more detail on um, what we've been doing on the error proposal side there. So the, the first model that uses the actuator zone is um, you have a CFD model to uh, model the flow field around an SL. And the CFD model also has an actuator zone to model the effect of the fan on the flow. But then um, without a, a propulsion model, you cannot really know um, what inefficiencies you're introducing to the flow, so what, how much heat you're adding to the flow by the fan. So to model that, we're using a propulsion model, in this case, pi cycle. And then the amount of inefficiency or like the heat added to the flow um, by the propulsion um, by the propulsor is computed by pi cycle. And then this creates a fully coupled um, um, fully coupled analysis loop between CFD and the propulsion model. Then the boundary condition version, sorry, yeah. The boundary condition version, um, we're using um, two boundary conditions, one on the fan face, one on the fan exit. And then um, we're setting three boundary condition variables to satisfy three conservation um, equations. We want to satisfy the amount of mass going into the fan face equals amount of mass coming out amount of mo momentum going into the fan phase equal, plus the gross thrust from the fan is equal to the momentum coming out. And then finally, the energy going in plus the energy we add with the fan is um, equal energy going out. I'll briefly mention this that uh, now throughout most of the optimization during my thesis, uh, the, the, how we satisfied these conservation equations was through um, constraints. But I'm going to get back to this on the second part of this um, today's talk uh, when I talk a bit more about the nonlinear solver stuff. Um, after developing the models, now we want to do um, single point design optimizations with them. Um, both, with both versions, um, we have an optimizer. Um, we have the geometry deformation module, mesh warping, and then the coupled analyses with both versions. And so in, in this, for, the, for this benchmark case, the geometry is parameterized using open VSP. And so here we're directly controlling the um, diameters and tangent angles on the cross sections that you see here. And this is how the optimization formulations look like. Again, I'm just trying to give you a, a 
overview. One thing I'll highlight is that the, actuator, the main difference between the actuator zone and the boundary condition version is that in the, uh, in the boundary condition version, um, we have three additional design variables that control the boundary conditions of the fan, and then three additional equality constraints that, um, sat that we need to satisfy the conservation equations. And again, I'll get back to this in the second half um, of the talk. So again, as I mentioned, one of my goal was to bring this to a point where we can reliably use this approach, right? And so, that, so that it's not something that's exotic, that you need a highly specialized person to work it. Um, that, and then I want to bring it to a point where you can use this practically and reliably and expect to get results. The one way to show that is we studied a, a range of optimizations with both models. So we looked at five different fan pressure ratios and then five different net thrusts with both models. So a grid of five by five um, times two, we performed a total of 50 error propulsive design optimizations. And most of these were performed automatically. Um, only a handful really need um, manual intervention. And then this is how we're trying to show that the methods are robust to uh, be more, reli more robust and more re reliable. Um, following the single point work, uh, one of the things we did was multi-point optimizations. So with error propulsive design optimization, um, before this, I don't think there were any example of fully coupled multi-point optimizations with um, derivatives. And here with this problem, we're looking at the cruise performance of the propulsor, but now subject to a distortion constraint at uh, rolling takeoff conditions. Again, the objective is the same, but we have the additional design variables and the constraints to model the off-design condition here. And the method um, manages to find the uh, multipoint optima where the optimizer reduces the fan phase distortion by a significant amount at off-design conditions, um, subject to a some small penalty at the um, nominal operating condition. And this really highlights the um, value you get out of multipoint optimization. And something like this would not have been possible without using OpenMD in the loop. Now again, our, our original application was the Stark ABL, so we went back and applied all these methods to the Stark ABL case, um, where we looked at the boundary layer ingestion, uh, ingestion fan, and then uh, we also looked at a reference potted fan design to estimate the benefit of boundary layer ingestion. Um, on the Stark ABL, we did a grid of three by three optimizations, so three fan pressure ratios, three fan sizes for both models, for a total of 18 CFD-based design optimizations, and then using these 18 points, uh, we calculated the amount of benefit you get out of um, using BLI. Now, after we developed the, um, the methods now, currently two PhD students um, work on different applications of these. Um, Saja, who's here, is working on um, using these methods to optimize an over the wing nacelle um, integration. And Andrew Lemkin, who's not here today, but he'll join tomorrow, is um, working on further developing these methods um, to, to be able to do complete turbofan um, engine type optimization. So a more complicated, more complete propulsion system optimization. So um, in his models, what he's doing is um, he's using both the actuator zone model to model the effect of the fan and also the boundary conditions um, to model the effect of the core. To model the internal components of the core, we're using PyCycle, and all of this system is coupled together, again, using OpenMDAO. And we're making steady progress on this work. Here's a, a short video of an example optimization using this. And um, the optimizer manages to reduce you know, the shocks and separation that might show up with this design and then um, get to a reasonable shape in the end. But there's still more work that's going on. And then tomorrow during the emphasis workshop, um, we'll cover a bit more of the details here. Now, in the second part, I'll talk a bit about my recent nonlinear solver development efforts on OpenMDAO. And this really is on my conference paper at ICCFD. Um, it's a nonlinear true complement solver. The title has for safety-based multidisciplinary models. That's because that was a safety-based conference. Um, what we're really focusing on is the nonlinear sure complement solver, but without using any fancy words, I'll try to explain why something like this is useful in the first place. Right. 
So when you're doing design optimization, right, any, any practical problem, equality constraints show up. A very simple example here is an aerodynamic shape optimization, where you're trying to minimize something like the drag um, by varying the shape variables and angle of attack subject to, subject to a net lift constraint, right? And then similar problems show up in other types of multidisciplinary formulations where you have aerostructural cases where you need to trim the aircraft, right? So there, there becomes a lift and a weight, and then the, you need to balance out the moments. Or my aeropropulsive example, right, where using the boundary conditions, I had to balance three conservation equations. Now, a lot of people realize when they look at this type of problem is that um, they can, instead of adding an equality constraint for lift, they can just vary angle of attack and solve for the lift and not include that, those, that design variable and the constraint in the optimization, right? Uh, this is very commonly done when you're doing standalone safety analysis called like CL solves. Um, but here, we want to do this with, with, in the loop with optimization. So what we really want is we want this first model that's the, that's the CFD model, that's the residuals of the CFD, Right? And then we add another equation, another residual that we want to satisfy that's representing our um, lift constraint, so the target lift, right? And when we have these two residuals, two, two systems, a lot of people recognize this as being a, looking like a two-discipline case. And then what we do for two-discipline cases is the nonlinear block outside del method, and it doesn't work for this example. Um, so normally, the nonlinear block outside down method, is you, you're you solving the first discipline on its own, then moving on to the second one, solving that on its own, and then repeating that process until convergence. But for the specific class of problems, you cannot solve for the second discipline on its own. And the reason is, um, to be able to use the nonlinear block outside down method, the, there's, a, there's an assumption involved and that is the diagonal subblocks of your Jacobian needs, need to be invertible. So you need to be able to solve for these disciplines one at a time. Now, for the case that I introduced earlier, right, we have the CFD residuals and then another residual equation for the lift. Now, lift itself, if you look at that second residual, it doesn't depend on angle of attack. So the partial derivative of lift with respect to angle of attack is zero. Lift only depends on angle of attack through the implicit states in the CFD solution, right? Angle of attack is a boundary condition variable that's used in the CFD. Then you convert your CFD model. The result of the CFD gives you the total lift. So due to this feature, um, the, these type of problems can be classified as what, the, what people call saddle point, point problems, where you may have a um, singular um, block on the diagonal. The, the global Jacobian is invertible, only that sub-diagonal is not, and then as a result, you cannot use nonlinear block gauss sadel methods with, with these type of problems. So to address this need, um, I developed a nonlinear sure complement solver that, um, from the user side, kind of mimics the behavior of nonlinear block gauss sadel but really handles this challenge of this non-invertible block. Um, I won't go over the details here, but the main takeaway for me here is that I drive the solver and then it's going to be um, included in the OpenMD hopefully at some point in the future so that the users don't need to understand all of this math, right? You as a user will be able to take, it, take this and then apply it to your problems where um, block cost settle wasn't working um, and then get the benefit that we're getting out of this, right? And to demonstrate um, the solver, I'm going back to the boundary condition model, right? where we had the two boundary conditions um, that need three uh, variables, that we need to set three variables to satisfy three conservation equations. Now, instead of including these conservation equations at equal, as equality constraints, now I want to solve for them um, within the optimization loop. And the hierarchy of the solver looks something like this, but I'll try to explain how it's similar to a nonlinear non block outside Dell method. So, um, on the highest level, we, you have the nonlinear sure complement solver. Um, but then, during the, when you're, as you're iterating through the, through the system, the first thing you do is you converge the CFD states, then you converge the propulsion states, and using the outputs of these two, um, then you come up with an update to these uh, balanced variables. So it kind of looks like I have two disciplines, I'm solving the one discipline, and then the second discipline, and I'm repeating until convergence. 
And then the convergence plot of this looks something like this. Again, the blue lines here are the CFD convergence. I'm first solving, the, solving for the CFD. Then I'm solving for the update for my balance residuals. Then I, I go back to the CFD and then iterate this process until convergence. Um, I'm trying to avoid going into like any of the details. Um, the, the, some of the iteration, if people are interested, are in the conference paper for this. Um, and my goal is to, so the, the original implementation was already done in OpenMDAO, and then my goal is to be, um, goal is to fully implement this OpenMDAO, including the derivative computation part as well. Now, to wrap things up, so in the first part, I'll talk a bit about the error propulsive work uh, we did throughout my thesis and the current ongoing work. Um, all of this used OpenMDAO, and then pretty much all of it, in my opinion, would not be possible without something like OpenMDAO, where we had um, multipoint optimizations, multiple CFD to propulsion system couplings, and then all with derivatives, right? And then the second part, um, I talked a bit about the nonlinear solver development that's going on right now, um, that I think is generally applicable to a wide range of design optimization problems where you have equality constraints um, that show up. Now, with that, so thank you. We have a few minutes for questions. Yeah, great talk. Um, what were some of the main reliability problems you saw for the error propulsion coupling? It's really the optimizations not um, converging. Maybe in the early stages because of solver or mesh failures, or then towards the later stages because of problem formulation. And you really need to, and then the main thing we address there is um, you really need to be careful about all the decisions you make when formulating these coupled models and the optimizations because any, any sort of a gap that exists, the optimizer will take advantage of it. For example, if you don't consider you know, some of the effects, the optimizer might go, oh, I'm going to introduce a lot of separation in the CFD model because that looks like a lower mass flow rate for the propulsion model that results in lower power all of a sudden. Right? So addressing some of the challenges like that and then solver improvements, geometry improvements, you know, improving the robustness throughout the entire framework. We also had to be careful about like mass and energy tracking. Um, it's easy to formulate a problem in this space that can create a little bit of energy or let, let a discrepancy between the propulsion and the arrow show up. And the, like I said the yesterday, the optimizer is really good at exploiting those weaknesses, so it would like create shocks to lower the pressure recovery and things like that, or to increase the effectively increase the pressure recovery, even though physically it wasn't really doing it. So. Anil? Yeah. Um, I've got a question. What happens if the the matrix partial R one partial U one is singular? Uh, which one? Yeah, on your yeah, sorry. Here in the Let me component. go back. So in your implementation, is that a case that you can handle or no? Uh, which that, one is singular? The upper diagonal there is singular. Upper left? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, yeah, I think in my implementation, I assume that's invertible. Okay. But yeah. Um, if you're, do you, do you have a practical problem where you have both of those diagonals non-invertible and then the system solvable? Okay. Yes. We can talk. Yes, we should talk. <laughs> Any other questions? You talked about conservation of energy, conservation of mass, momentum. Um, can you consider entropy at all? You know, you have like a nozzle, you have isentropic relations at some portions that might make sense. Type of thing. Right, right. Um, let me go back. So we're so in the boundary condition uh, version of the model, we're only looking at the we're only modeling the propulsion system. That's where the fan is. So the only interface to the propulsion system happens at the fan face and the fan exit. So the rest of the nozzle is in CFT. So.
Can you flip back to your chart on the convergence history of your, yeah. um, I think it was one of your last charts there. Yeah. Yeah. So looking at this and just as you go through the different iterations, right, you have your CFD solution that's converging, but you don't converge it very tightly. And then it you know, goes to the balance residuals and things, and then it steps down. Is that something that you programmed in? Yeah. And, yeah. So find the, like the tolerance to, to decrease over over time. That's not automatic, but yeah, it, it's partially converged. So there are tons of details um, in this solver. And then, so the trade-off you get by using something like this is, right, you either have a decoupled system where you do one full CFD, then if I, if I have three constraints, you do three adjoints, right? That's the cost on one side. The cost on the other side is now I want to, I need to convert this coupled system, right? But then I avoid solving the three additional adjuncts I need for the equality constraints because those are handled within the solution. And then it's not straightforward which approach would be more performant, at least. Um, one of the things you really have to do is, as you're converging this, just like how you would do a nonlinear block of Seidel, you need to, it's, or at least in our, uh, ex, um, in our experience, it's better to partially converge um, each discipline, move on to the next, and then do more information transfer instead of you know, trying to fully converge everything and then um, try to work with that. Um, so here you're converging the CFD um, by uh, um, relative tolerance that you set. Then the, the, the sure formulation needs, if you have like three um, variables you're solving for, you need to solve three linear systems, but those you can also approximately solve. And then depending on the varying levels of approximations you do on those solutions, right, um, you get a trade-off between convergence rate and the cost of each iteration which also needs to be um, tuned. So very similar to a nonlinear block gauss Seidel method. Yeah, does that answer? Yeah, so yeah. It's, yeah it's, you're tuning and, and defining some of that convergence. Yeah, so it's, yeah. Oh. yeah. Because, it, yeah, if you try to convert the CFD and those linear systems all the way every time, this method almost always comes out to be more expensive. Now, one of the main points of the method, though, is um, it's not just performance during optimization, right? When you have something like that propulsion system, somebody tells you, okay, take this and analyze it. What people have to do without something like this is they need to run a small optimization problem, right? Because these are only constraints, nonlinear constraints, three by three system. You can use some other methods, but um, to be able to, you know, uh, automatically just solve for this, right? You, like you would solve for any other most disciplinary problem, you need a solver like this, which is also some of the other benefit. Any last questions for Anil? All right, thank you very much.